All right, today we're going to talk about ionic bonds. Okay, so we talk about how valence electrons will bond, um, will make the bonds with the atoms. So, the first question, nothing to write on your notes yet, just think about this. Why do atoms share electrons? Remember, they want zero or eight valence electrons. So, imagine that you and a friend want an apple, but neither one of you have enough money to buy the apple. The apple costs 40 cents. Your friend only has 35 cents, and you have 5 cents. Now, neither one of you has enough to buy the apple. But if you pool your money, if you share the money, or if you just give your 5 cents to your friend, then you will have enough money to buy the apple. Well, the same thing happens with atoms. They want 8 valence electrons in that atommost shell. And if they don't have enough, then they're looking to get enough. They're looking for other atoms that are willing to share or transfer electrons. <clears throat> so first of all is the term ion. And the term ion, so what is an ion is what you're writing in your notes. And the term ion is an atom or group of atoms that has become electrically charged. So what that means is now the atom that was neutral because it had a positive charge and a negative charge is now electrically charged because it's either lost an electron and become positive or it's gained an electron and become negative. And of course there's this common chemistry joke where one atom says to the other, I just lost an electron and this guy says, are you sure? And because he lost the electron, now instead of being neutral, he's overall positive. And so he says, I'm positive. Well, when he became positive, this guy became an electron, I mean, became an ion. And because he gave his electron to the next guy, <clears throat> he's an ion too. This is actually called a cation, and this is an anion. So what's the difference between negative ion and positive ion? <clears throat> so, let's figure out what we're going to write here. Because in your notes, it doesn't say exactly what you see on your screen. Basically, I'm going to explain it, and then I'm going to type what I want you to, to put on your screen. So, the difference between a negative ion and a positive ion is that when an atom loses an electron, it loses a negative electron. It loses a negative charge. And when it loses a negative charge, it overall becomes positive. And if an atom takes on an extra electron, it gains a negative charge and becomes negative. So this is what we're going to write on our notes. So now what you should see is um, exactly what's in your notes, and you're going to put negative ions gain an electrical charge. Because remember, what we're passing back and forth is an electron. That's negative. So a negative ion gains an electrical charge, and a positive ion loses an electrical charge. So what you see in this picture is you have an a overall stable atom. It has four positives and four negatives. Well, when this atom gives away an electron to some other atom, it now becomes positive because now it only has three electrons because it gave an electron away to another atom. And so overall, this has a positive charge. And so this makes it an ion. <clears throat> So when an atom gains an electron, so I'm an overall, this is an overall neutral atom. It has four positive protons and four negative electrons that balance each other out. But when it takes on a valence electron to make eight in its outermost shell, which is what it wants, then it will become overall negative because it's taken on a negative electron so it has now five electrons, where before it only had four, which stabilized, but now it has five, so it's overall negative ion. And there's nothing to write here in your paper. Okay, so what is an ionic bond? So this is number three on your page. I'll put a number three here so everybody knows where we are.
<clears throat> I'm going to go back just a second to make sure all the other ones are numbered properly. So this was number one. And this one was number two. Okay, and here we have number three. Okay, so what is an ionic bond? Well, because an atom takes on an electron, this guy is taking on an electron because he wants a valence electron, he becomes overall negative. Well, let's say this atom gave up its electron to this guy. So when this atom gave up its electron to this one, this became overall positive. Well, what do we know about opposites? Think about magnets. Opposites attract each other. So these two, now that they're opposite charges, attract each other. So these atoms are now bonded together. They stay together. And so um, this attraction between two oppositely charged ions is called an ionic bond. It's not a coincidence that the word is ionic bond and it's an attraction between ions. That's no coincidence. It's named after the fact that it's two oppositely charged ions. So how, ionic, how are ionic bonds formed? And this is number four. So ionic bonds are formed because, look at sodium. Sodium's in the first column of the periodic table, so it has one valence electron. And because it has one valence electron, it's looking to get rid of it. it. It either wants eight or zero. Well, it's closer to zero than it is to eight. So it wants to get rid of that electron. So it's going to give up that electron to chlorine. Chlorine has seven. It's a halogen. It has seven valence electrons. So sodium is going to give its electron to chlorine. Now sodium has none in its outermost shell. And chlorine has a total of eight. Well, sodium overall became positive, and chlorine overall became negative. <clears throat> okay, so this is a cation. Sodium is now a cation, and chlorine is now an anion. On, and they stick together as a compound because this one's overall positive and this one's overall negative. Excuse me. So what does the word polyatomic mean? This is number five. Okay, so polyatomic ions are ions made of more than one atom. Poly means many, and atomic means atom. So it's polyatomic, means more than one atom. So these are polyatomic ions. So how are ions named? This is number six. There's actually a specific way of naming ions. So sodium chloride is called sodium chloride <clears throat> because sodium was the positive ion and chloride was the negative ion. So whenever you're naming ions, you put the name of the positive ion, put the name of the atom that lost an electron first. And that's usually a metal because if you think about um, the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals, they each only have one valence electron and two valence electron. So they're willing to give up their electrons and become overall positive. So that's going to be those, those alkaline and alkaline earth metals are probably going to be the first in the naming of the, um, of the ion. So it's sodium chloride. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to cough. Excuse me. Okay, so what are the characteristics of ions? Because electrons are being transferred, a key word in ionic bonding is a transfer of electrons. Well, because the ionic compounds, because the atoms, or the valence electrons, sorry, are being transferred, given away to the other compound, or to the other atom, it makes for a really strong, tight bond. 
And these type bonds, ionic bonds, usually ionic compounds like table salt, have a crystal shape. They have a very high melting point, meaning their temperature has to get really high for these objects to melt because their bonds are so tight. And they have really good electrical conductivity for the same reason. Because these bonds are really close and are really tight, the, it allows electricity to pass through it really easily. And that's all you need for the notes on ionic bonds.